Okay, in this video we're going to practice our programming skills and make a simple calculator. Uh, one of the unique features of this calculator is that it will have an undo button. So to implement the undo button we have to learn about a data structure called a stack. All right. So first let's just start with the calculator. Alright, so uh, when you have a calculator display, the first thing you do is you punch in a, a certain number to start with, right? So we need a starting value, <clears throat> and this, this value is going to be updated depending on the commands you issue to the calculator. So we have some current value, and we get that from the input command. And um, then we need to make sure that this is a floating point decimal. Uh, all right, so that should give us our uh, current value. <clears throat> we are going to periodically need to display that current value, so we'll make a quick little function to do that. So this, uh, this string, if you haven't seen this syntax before, it is a format string, and you can inject uh, variables in curly braces, and it will inject it right into the string. So what we want to inject in here is current value. Now obviously current value is a float, so this syntax with the, um, the format string automatically converts anything that's not a string to a string, so you won't get a type error. All right, so we can display the CV, the current value, and that's enough code to try to test. In our starting value, 23, current value 23. All right, so that's good enough to start. Uh, then basically we need to set up some sort of loop where we ask uh, the user for a command to modify this value, right? So that's going to be an infinite loop until the user types in something that will cause us to break out of the loop, loop using the break keyword. So the way we're going to break out of the loop is if the user just doesn't type anything. So the input we get is the empty string. All right. So um, we need to get some user data, and we'll say. an operator followed by a value and we'll do some examples here um, let's see that'll be like I don't know a uh, plus sign where are we at here there we go a plus sign and then five should add five to the current value um, times and then 2.3 should multiply the current value by 2.3, uh, etc. So something like this. So we're, we're kind of getting two pieces of information from the user at one time here. We're getting the operation that we want to perform and then the value associated with that operation. All right, so that's our user data. Um, and we'll say if user data is the empty string, then print. empty input detected um, and then we break out of the loop and then once we're out of the loop we'll go ahead and print program something like that all right so I'll test this functionality out starting value 12 um, and I can type in plus 5 it's not going to do anything uh, it's just going to keep getting input until I press enter, and then it'll break out of the loop. So all we really tested there was this part to see if we're actually going to break out of the loop on empty input, and it does. Okay, so we get the user data, and then we basically have to execute a command based on that, that data. 
right? So <clears throat> there are two parts. We have an operator, and that is going to be the first character. So if it was, you know, times 2.3, the very first character is the operator. That's the special command, right? So that's going to be uh, using square bracket notation, reference by index. I can reference one of the individual characters of the string user data uh, by its index value. So the indexing starts at zero. So zero is the first character. So if this was user data, user data square bracket zero would reference the character at index zero. Well, that one there. All right, so that's the operator. And then we would have a uh, value. We have some value associated. And this is user data. And we're going to, instead of getting the first character, we're going to get a slice of characters. And we want to get the remaining characters here. So if this string is, uh, we're, we're going to use uh, string slices here. So if this is our user data string, the first slice, if you think of it like a loaf of bread, the first slice is to the left of the entire string. It's the very beginning. Um, and that's, that's actually the zero slice. So the indexing starts at zero, just like with index values. So the zero slice is here to the left of, uh, at the very beginning of the string, this would be the, the one slice, and then we'll take it to the end. All right, so we go from the one slice colon to the end. And if you leave the number blank after the colon, that implies uh, the slice should be taken to the end of the string or the list. All right. So this is going to return another string, basically everything except that first character. Right? And then we want this to be a floating point decimal. So that gives us our operator and our value. Right? And then we can say um, if, let's see, if user data, uh, no, operator, sorry, if operator is the plus sign then our current value uh, should be modified adding on this value, uh, UE. All right, so this is the value we got from the user. So if the operator was a plus sign, then we take whatever the current value was and plus add that value. LF operator is minus, we do the opposite. We would say current value minus equals value. All right, and then we rinse and repeat. We're just going to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division for this example. So if the operator is multiply, then we multiply. And if the operator is divide, then we divide. All right. So this should perform the operation. And then we basically need to display our current value again at the very end. So display CV. OK, so that, uh, that should get us a basic calculator. Let's test it out. Uh, starting value 23 divide by two. Uh, let's see, I got an issue here. Uh, operator. Oh, misspelled operator. Uh, on all these. Operator. There we go. Uh, starting value 23, divide by two. 11.5 minus 1.5. Plus four uh, times two point five. Okay, uh, so that looks like it's uh, it's working there. <clears throat> so uh, I can press enter and empty input detected program complete. So this is a simple cal calculator, but what we want to do to make this interesting is we want to learn about a data structure called a stack. And if you've ever wondered how computer programs undo operations, they use what's called a stack. The concept of a stack is it's just a collection. It's a list 
Uh, we're going to use a list for our stack, um, but you don't have to use uh, something uh, like the built-in Python list. You can build your own stacks using a node structure if you want, but it's simpler to code up uh, with a list. So the idea is with a stack, whatever side you add something on, whatever side of the list you add, you have to also remove from that side. So a stack is sort of the opposite of a queue. A queue is a line. So uh, if you're waiting in line at the bank or something like that, a queue is the first one there is the first one served. So the first one in the line is the first one out of the line. A stack is the opposite. The first one in the line is the last one out. Right? Think of it like stacking dishes on, on a table. If you stack up 10 dishes, the last one you stacked on the stack is the first one that has to come off. You can't just grab the one on the bottom. Right? So that's why it's called a stack. So we're going to make an undo stack. And you'll see how this works. Basically, any of the commands we issue, right? we've got this operator and a value pair. So these together would be a command. And so we'll add those commands to the undo stack every time we uh, issue a command to be executed. Right? And then if we get a, a user data that says undo, then we can take something off the undo stack, find the opposite command, and execute that. Okay, so something that's very important with an undo stack is anything you undo, if, if it's undoable, it has to have an opposite. Right? It doesn't make sense to undo something that doesn't have an opposite. So in this case, the opposite of addition would be subtraction. So if we got the command on the undo stack that was add 5, the opposite of that would be to subtract 5 to take us back to where we were. Right? So the opposite of add would be subtract, subtract would be add, multiply would be divide, and divide would be multiply. Okay, So that's sort of the idea here. And what we want to do is we're going to make a couple simple functions here. Add undoable. So this is just some item we're going to add to our stack. Undo stack pinned. So we are adding from the right hand side. When you use a pinned, everything adds from, from the right hand side. And you keep adding items on the right hand side. So for a stack, we have to remove from the same side that we add from. Okay? A queue would be different. If a pinned, since a pinned always adds to the right, then a queue would be the first one in is the first one out. So in a queue, you'd have to take from the left-hand side because that was the first item in, in the queue, right? So queues and stacks are all about uh, adding data to the collection and removing it, and just controlling that flow. How is data added to this list and how is it removed? It's the ordering of additions and removals, right? So <clears throat> here we're adding an undo. This is an undo stack. So we're adding to the right. And so that means to remove, we have to remove from the right as well. Okay, so define remove, remove undoable. And you can just pop that should return the last item in the list or if you wanted to be sure you could put in an index number Python allows for negative indexing so you can say negative one that always means the last item uh, alright so we've got two we've set up our undo stack it's it's pretty bland it's pretty simple um, but notice we're gonna use these functions always to modify the stack we're not gonna reference this stack directly and in fact since that is the case we're going to put a little underscore here just to make sure that we don't touch this variable so that underscore in Python is supposed to tell other developers hey leave this alone <clears throat> normally that's that's reserved for that's sort of a class syntax but we're gonna use it here anyway alright so we've got our undo stack uh, <clears throat> what we might want to do here is break this up into uh, its own function. Uh, the reason being is when we get user data, uh, if it's the empty string, then we, we break out of the loop, exit the program. If they say undo, 
then we're going to have to do something special. We're going to remove something from the stack and then execute that command. Now, if it's neither of those two things, then we're going to do this stuff, right? So this stuff uh, only occurs if we don't have uh, the undo be command being issued by the user. All right, so really this stuff must be separated out um, because when we undo a command, we have to get that command from the undo stack and then send it to basically uh, this set of instructions, right? So let's, let me show you what I'm trying to describe there. So we're gonna define execute command, right? And each command has an operator and a value. Let's, let's call it op and val. And it's basically all of this stuff. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in here. Right. And I might as well say operator here. So I don't have to rewrite all those. OK. So we're going to execute a command, and that's operator and value. Now, one of the issues we're going to run into here is because this is a function, um, our current value is in the global scope. So that's this value. So uh, by default in Python, you cannot modify what a global scope variable uh, points to. So you have to use a special keyword, global current value. So the, now this allows me to, inside of this function, modify what value is associated with this identifier. Okay, so this, uh, this is an identifier pointing to something in memory. Uh, that happens to be a floating point decimal, right? Uh, normally, in a function, if I just set current value equal to, you know, four or something like that, this would be an entirely separate uh, identifier, a separate memory location. Current value in the context of this function uh, is a different variable than current value in the global scope. So if I want to tell my function that I'm actually modifying something in the global scope, I have to use the global keyword and specify the identifier that I'm going to be modifying. So that allows me to do these operations. And, th and again, that's only because I put this all in a function. Down here, it was in a, a while loop. It wasn't in a function, so I didn't need to do that. All right, so that's execute command. So here, we could just pop in execute command real quick. Operator and value. And this should just behave the same as it did before if we did everything right. So let's test it to make sure we didn't break anything. And our starting value 23 divided by 2. All right, it seems to be working. So now we've executed the command. So now we have to add our, our undo stuff. All right, so if user data. Uh, in case they have upper or lower case, we're gonna we're gonna make this all lowercase, and we'll say if user data, the lowercase version of whatever they typed in, is undo, then this is where we're gonna do all of our undo stuff. Okay. Otherwise, and I'm passing on this implementation right now, so I can finish writing my if else statement. So otherwise, we're going to do this stuff. Right? But one other thing. So this is the case when the user actually entered a command to the calculator. Right. So we need to execute that command. Not only that, we also need to add that command to our undo stack. So we're going to make a command be a tuple. A tuple is just like a list, except you can't modify the values in it. So we're going to make the tuple uh, uh, have the first value be the operator and the second value be the value, right? So these two items combined are the command, right? When we execute a command, we pass in the operator and the value. So if we want to track which commands have been issued, we have to group them together, right? So one command would be an operator and a value pair. 
the two of them together. So this command is what we have to add to our undo stack. So add undoable. And what are we adding to our undo stack? The command. All right. So this, again, just gets the operator and the value from user data and then executes the command. But then the only thing we added here is we, we added the command to our undo stack. And that way we can get to it later. When do we need to get to it? Well, that would be here, is if the user data, right, if the user typed in undo, then we need to undo the last command. So here, we will say, <clears throat> first we have to check to see if there's anything in the undo stack. So if the length of undo stack is zero, then we'll print nothing to undo. Right. Otherwise, we're going to have to pop an item off the undo stack. So it's always going to be the last thing that was executed that, that we're interested in undoing. Right. So here, for example, I had 23, I divided by 2. The last thing I did was divide by 2. So when I undo that, I have to get that last thing and then find the opposite. So again, whenever you're undoing something, it's important that the things that you're undoing have opposites. So every action that you are, that are that you are able to undo must have an opposite. Right. So here, uh, let's just get the command. The command is um, we want to remove the undoable from the stack. So here we added the undoable. That just added it to the end of our list. And remove undoable just removes it from the end of our list. All right. So that gives us an operator and a value. So this is special Python syntax where you can set uh, two identifiers equal to the contents of a tuple or a list. Um, so since command has two values in it, you can uh, extract those values into two identifiers. This line here is essentially the same as operator equals command zero, and then value equals command one. Right? This is just a one-liner to accomplish these two things. All right. So that's common Python syntax you might see. All right. So we now have our operator and our value. So we could execute the command, but First, we have to find the opposite, right? So the opposite of operator. If operator is the plus sign, then operator, we now want to set that to the minus sign. L if operator is the minus sign, we would set that to the plus sign. And then we can copy and paste this for multiply and divide, and copy and paste for divide and multiply. So operator now at this point, if it was a plus up here, then this would be true, which means we'd set it to a minus. So we're setting all the operator to the opposite action. And then after that, we can just execute the command. Right, so we would just say, um, and, and we're still in this else block, right? Uh, we want to execute command operator on value. All right, so let's take a look. Let's run the program. Uh, One hundred twenty-three or twelve point three, and then uh, times two minus uh, 1.6 and then if I type undo it adds the 1.6 back on and then if I type undo right it does the opposite of multiplying by 2 which would be divide by 2 and then undo nothing to undo 
multiply by five, undo, uh, add three, divide by two, undo, 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 enter. Okay, so that idea is basically showcasing the per the an undo stack, right? The idea of the undo stack. It uses a stack data structure, which is one in which you control how items are added and removed. You add the items to the end of the list and remove them from the same side that you add them. Right? So that's the opposite of a queue, which is like a line. So a queue, you add from one side and remove from the other. Okay? One of the most common places that, un, uh, that stacks are used is in an undo function. So you might have everybody's familiar with some type of uh, undo functionality in in programs today so I thought I'd showcase uh, how that's actually implemented uh, using a simple calculator design so through the code one more time this is the undo stuff we get the value these are our helper functions to display and then a helper function to execute a command then the main program is here And we display the, the current value and while true we go in this loop right so we might actually want to put this underneath in the main program too usually it's a good idea to sort of have uh, <clears throat> all of your helper functions at the top right and then have your main program where you use those functions all right, so this has been, let's double check, make sure I didn't break anything with that. Point three, point two, undo. Yeah, okay. So this has been simple calculator with undo functionality. Hopefully uh, you learned something and had some fun.